Everybody stop what you're doing because we wanted to share with you all an amazing and valuable interview to the four elements. Hello, my name is Lamar Johnson, CEO and president of the four elements. Today on Your Ancestors, we've had the opportunity of interviewing the oldest living person in Yazoo City, Mississippi. Before we go ahead and introduce you all to the wonderful person we've had the opportunity to interview, do me one favor, like, share, and subscribe to this video. But not only do I want you to, to do those three things, but we want you to tag three people in this video. And the reason why, I will tell you shortly. But go ahead, share it. When you share it, go ahead and tag Miss Oprah Winfrey, President Barack Obama, and Mr. Usher Raymond himself. Stay tuned. Welcome back, you guys. This wonderful individual of 106 years young has a final request of shaking the hands of Miss Oprah Winfrey, Mr. President Barack Obama, and Mr. Usher Raymond um, before she moves to the next life. And I want you to be able to help us to make that dream come true. This person that we're going to introduce to you guys has been giving numerous awards for her hard work her dedication, and her strength in the community. She's even had a street named after her, as well as a park named after her. Can you guess it? Well, I'll tell you. We've had an amazing opportunity of interviewing Miss Leola Dillard, 106 years young, out of Yazoo City, Mississippi. She shared a lot of information regarding her life, her legacy, her experience, and her family. Um, truly a blessing. She's still fighting strong um, and able to do just about anything that you can imagine. All right, guys, before we give Miss Dillard the opportunity to tell her story, we do want to share some accomplishment with you guys. Now, I'm only sharing some of the accomplishments. Miss Dillard has a whole wall of accomplishments, and even that wall is not enough for the accomplishments and the things that she's been recognized in her community. Um, so we want to go ahead and, and, and share with you guys some of those recognitions that she's got. Miss Dillard was recognized by USA Weekend Magazine for her hard work and dedication with Make a Difference Day in Yazoo City, Mississippi. She was awarded with the Encore Award as well as, as given the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. where she met and spoke with Mr. Usher Raymond, who she thought was a member of the Usher Board as well as she was recognized by Senator Thad Cortran, uh, Senator Ted Kennedy, as well as Senator Corrin Hatch, um, and all recognized her for her Make a Difference um, Day in Yazoo City, Mississippi. She taught school, she helped the mentally challenged, as well as supplied school supplies for the children who needed it the most. She also assisted the less fortunate in funding free flea market items um, that were donated to her. Such an amazing cause. She remembers her house being fully filled as well as the, the yard outside being full, um, but people were still generous enough to, to continue to give. She also worked in the job court to help and assist the people who needed it the most. With, again, a whole wall of accomplishments, it is so important to make Ms. Dillard's wish come true. Not only because of the things that she did, because she did it from the goodness of her heart. And her last wishes are just to meet and shake the hands of Mr. President Obama, Ms. Oprah Winfrey, and again, to reconnect with Mr. Usher Raymond. So if you guys could please make that happen, that would be a dream come true for this 106 years young, um, young lady. Without further ado, we want to go ahead and introduce you all to Ms. Leola Dillard. I'm Leola Dillard, uh, born February 6, 1912. I was born in Yazoo County to the mother of Roxy Pikes Roma. I was the only child of Roxy Pikes. How was that being the only child? 
pretty neat. <laughs> you, you get you get to get whatever you want. <laughs> you go wherever you want to go. They just they they spoil me. I know. All right. And you say you was born in Yazoo County. <laughs> what part? You you know uh, a place called Bentonia. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's where you I'm were born there. Uh, were you born at the house, or what, did they have any like at the house? Okay. Did why? Well, I don't know mm -hmm. what not. Do you remember any of your childhood? I remember going to school. And I went to school. And the children sometimes would fight me. <laughs> and I, I had some cousins. Uh, they, they'd take up on me. They'd fight for me. And no. the next day, the cousins stayed at home and the girls <laughs> grew up about <laughs> itself. <laughs> Now, what would be the reasons why they want to fight you, Miss Dillard? They just do that, just fight you, just cause the you are you. You don't have no special reason. Yes. And these were people of, of our color skin, or were they just other people as no, well? No, they were black folks like I was, but they just were mean. Wow. But I went to school. I went to school as most of the time I was in school. And I, I, I went to Miss Betty, she was my, my teacher. She taught me uh, a, a record saying, the clock sitting on the wall, tick, tick, ticking time away from all. Is it tick your dream, dream? Your dream get you nowhere if you don't get up and do something about your dream. If you don't do nothing about your dream, your dream will die when you die. But if you get up and do something, you leave your dream on here that you're dreaming not doing, so you'll leave this legacy here because you're doing something about it. Yes, the clock goes ticking on. I it, got that at school. So was it from like a, a famous person or Miss Betty? Yeah, she was my teacher. So she was the one who? Uh -huh. the, I don't know nothing else but about But just Betty. that. Okay, that's pretty neat. The clock goes tick tock. Tick, 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 tick on. Tick, tick, tick on. When you got in the world, it start ticking on. Wow. Tick, tick, tick. Just tick, tick, and tick. And if you leave this world, it's still ticking. Still going to tick. And if you don't dream something, do something big. Do something and try to do something about it like you're doing something about your dream. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. And if you, you if you die, your dream will go living on and the clock will go living on. And it, it is. That, that made me think of a, what can I do? So I done a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I done a world of stuff would be the clock when I die. I'm leaving some legacy back here. Yes, ma'am, you clock, definitely are. Clock ticking on, and my work is gonna be ticking on. Yes, ma'am. You leave it in your children, and they leave it in their children. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So as a child, what did you do for fun? Well, I would go play with the other folks, sure. <laughs> they would let me go, they let me go in the way I want to go. And i go play with the other people's children. Yeah, what type of games did you play? We played jacks, hopscop, any of those kind of games. Now jacks is I, the one where you you throw down the uh -huh, the, 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 the ball play. and you try to pick up as many. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. And we play checkers. Checks. I love playing checkers. <laughs> I played checkers with some of my children. I, I used to play with them after they got here. Mm -hmm. And so how was how was life during those times? I, I know you you're talking on the wonderful times that you were going out it was, play. it was great with me. It was great because I could have most anything I wanted to. It was really great. Of the stepdad that my mama married, he was a sweet man to me. And they gave me everything that I thought I wanted. I gave it to him. Now, this happened back, this, this was around 1912. Now, what we hear um, in the textbooks that I always go back to, you, you're describing a time that was great for you, but the life surrounding you, was it, was it different than how we see it? No, the life around me was terrible. It and was what made it terrible? terrible. People had to work on the plantation. I remember once I told, we moved to a plantation, and I told Shreya to tell the man, my children go to school, when school grows, I don't care what's going on with my children. So he didn't tell me. So when school room, I told my children, get ready to go to school. And the man said, well, look, your children got to work till the fields out. I said, no, my children go to school. 
I tell him, he say, well, you got to move. You're running my folks. You got to move. I say, what do I move right now? Because I had a bought a little piece of house up there. Mm -hmm. He said, no, wait till you get there. So we stayed on there, but my children went to school. And he had a wife, a teacher, and he's children if he had any went to school. But my, I, we had to work to the field with that. Describe yourself as the young adult growing up. Uh, I know you, you talked about being a child and going to play, but as you started becoming a teenager, oh, yeah. how was those now, times? Going with the big girls and meeting these boys. And, <laughs> honey, I, I met a lot of boys. <laughs> <laughs> we and these girls would go up and down the street, and the boys would go up and down the street with us. <laughs> we had a good time with them. But uh, my mama was a hard worker. And they didn't have work, so we didn't make anything. I think she got a book and went up there and cleared $500. So you, you said that she was a hard worker. What, what did she do? She just worked in the field. They didn't think work. Uh, my mom worked like I did. When I grew up, she worked hard. And as you were growing up, that's what you, you followed in her footsteps and you, you went out there and chopped the cotton as well? <laughs> that's right, that chopped cotton. How did you like that? Well, I liked it all right. Huh? I, I, uh, we, we had a cotton field not far from the house and Jewel, my oldest daughter, I bought her uh, a telephone. She put it on the porch and she would go up the hole up there and come back, you know, <laughs> so she could hear what was going on. <laughs> when you were in the field, did you, um, did you have any experience with people that may have came and offered you an opportunity? Uh, to do something different. Well, yeah, I, I, I got out of the field to the school. She wanted many on, oh, man. wanted me to sub. She she said had some families, but she didn't want them. She was just being really nice to me. She wanted me to sub her school when she broke her leg. So, so as a teacher, how long did you teach? I did that substitute work. Three years, only three years, that was sub work. Three years, so she told me, you worked on substitute license, now you got to help yourself. Mm -hmm. So I went down and tried to take this test. I failed it. <laughs> 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 I went back again and I passed it that That's time. Good. And you worked on So I went to, I went to work good then. She gave me a job and I taught my children. And I just went from then on. I went to Jackson, and I went back to school. And then I went and prepared myself. There you so go. She said, you've been on emergency last you got to get out there and prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. And I did it. I really worked hard at myself. And so you, uh, you went and got your, your bachelor's degree? Uh -huh. Now, during these times, did you have any hobbies that you liked or, or talents outside of teaching? Uh, I took up crocheting. <laughs> <laughs> I crocheted and I crocheted up until today. I some still, of the that you yeah, you want to show I, some of the things that you work I on? I still crochet and stitch. I make, oh, sh make shoes and I make shows and sell them. Uh, that's the way I made my little money. Mm -hmm. I sell them for $5. When you were coming up, you made bits for yourself. And people would come and buy four or five pairs. I like crochet. <laughs> I love those it. are really nice. I'm going to have to take a picture of those. I oh, when I was young, I made bed spreads and everything. I Out made of crochet? old bed spread. Honey, wow. I made some stuff. I really made some stuff when I was young. <laughs> I got a, a wrap around here, a little one. Yeah, got somewhere. And I made big spreads for big beds. What was the first thing you made? And who taught you how to crochet? Well, I had, you don't know, Alice here. And that's who taught me. She was uh, crocheting from her heart. You touched a little bit on, on you, you, you and your husband, um, but I wanted to, to give you this opportunity to tell me all about him. How did you meet him? When did you meet him? Well, my husband, he was one tramping him down the road with him. <laughs> what was and his name? And he had another girlfriend. He, he had another good friend, and he was engaged to that good friend. <laughs> and she tipped off and married somebody else. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> so from there, that's when you, you took your, your opportunity and introduced <laughs> yourself. <laughs> what did you admire most about your husband? I didn't admire anything about him. <laughs> but I tell you, when he, he got older, he went to work. He really, he wasn't a good worker or nothing. <laughs> and, 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 That's keep telling the truth. No, it's this guy hate for me to say anything. But he went, he went to work. He did go to work. What did you find most rewarding or difficult about uh, being a parent? I love those three jobs, I tell you. They're the most rewarding thing to me because I wanted to take care of my children. And I worked at that First Baptist Church, then I taught school. And it was the most rewarding thing I could do. Yes, ma'am, to be able to, su to support and educate your children. That's right. Yes, I wanted to educate my children. Did you spoil or... Uh, that you were more lenient with your children or even grandchildren? I tried to do the best I could by, but some of them pretend I was more <laughs> than good. <laughs> they all were jealous of her, even to Jewel. <laughs> See, Jewel gave everyone when she went to Chicago, and she gave everyone a trip when they finished school to, to her house. And, that. and they say I was most lenient to this child. I was going to school, I was able to give her a bank account to mm. get her own money. And I, see, I wasn't able to do that with others because I had to pay all those tuition. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing was real rewarding. My husband went off and worked and sent me the money. <laughs> <laughs> sent me the money. And I took the money and sent her to German school. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he came home mad enough to kill me. <laughs> My mama was a hard worker, and, and I you worked learned hard. That from her. I really worked hard, and I wasn't forced to work hard, but I did. Miss Dilla, talk to me about the first time you got the opportunity to vote. Yeah, time to put out vote. And to vote. register. Finally put out register vote. I hopped up there and went on and voted. <laughs> and we was on this main plantation then. <laughs> <laughs> this man came riding by the hour in this in this. Oh, in this truck going to town, he came around by and said, you better get your name off that voting list. Yeah, he said, well, how do I? I said, how I get it over? You better get it over. I don't care how you get it over. You just get it over. If you don't, you don't know what's good for you and your children. Oh, wow. And they got me. I didn't want nobody to hurt my mm -hmm. children. Okay, I went straight on and got it over. <laughs> I got it over. Wow. And, later, and, then, and then later, uh, when did you have? Later, when everybody started to vote, then I went back. And then went on and signed yeah. up. So you're very active in the community. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the things that, that you had a strong passion for. I started this club going. And I got Miss Leach and all the young women to come in this club with me. And what was the name of the club? Community Civic Club. Community Civic? And what did you do within this club? I carried children to different places of the state. We went to different places. I, we, we, we went to places they had never been in the north. I gathered loads of children to me. And so was this, this more, and I don't mean to interrupt you, with this more of, of helping the people who needed it most? So you were, you were helping the, 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 the children in Yazoo City uh -huh. um, to take them places that they've never I've been never before. Been. Where, where, where were the places that, you, they, that you've taken them to? Well, I tell you, some of these preachers got up and preached, and uh, such as Charles Knight, I don't know if he was preaching. That's right. He got up and said, this lady gave me the first job I ever had in my life. Wow. And another, there's another man said the Great same thing. They all gave me credit for it. And yes, ma'am. The places that you've been, do you remember? Oh, I did a lot. Bitch, I thought Yeah, to Jackson. To eat. I let them rode the train. They hadn't rode. They had never done that. And I had to, the folks to come up to Ben Tony to pick us up. A train wasn't bringing us back. And they come picked us up and brought us back. I wanted them to see how the train ride would do. And what's, what were some other things that you did within the community? Well, that was about the biggest I started. 
I started then Miss Flea Market. And I started getting clothes and things to give everybody. And honey, people brought me suits of furniture. You'd be surprised at the furniture and stuff people brought and gave me. One lady, I said, don't you want to sell and get a little something for that? Uh, to tell yourself, she said, no, we we just brought a new set. And, and she's uh, giving it from her heart. We don't need it. Mm -hmm. We're going to give it to somebody. And then they brought so much. So that's what I stopped. I, I had the house full. I had everywhere I could stick some. And how did how did you get that started? Did you, did you go to the news? Did you... Just no, was it word started, of mouth? Just, I got the news people to come up and talk to me. And tell me about your recognition in Washington. Oh boy. Oh, that she, was an event to reimagine. Yeah. with Senator Orrin Hatch. They had that big old thing up there with all our names on. Senator Ted wow. Kennedy, Senator Orrin Hatch, so, and <laughs> Little Miss Leola Dillon. <laughs> yeah, but those three were on those big columns. But that wow. was a treat to my life. That was a treat to my life right there. Mm -hmm. And Usher was there. The singer? The singer. <laughs> what? Usher. He was recognized too. Usher wow. hugged me. And really, Miss Dillard? And he they, sent they, Mama a message and asked her if he could take a picture with her. And Mama said, Oh, yeah, that's so nice. The Usher want to get out the door and come <laughs> and take a picture with her. Mm -hmm. over to mother and he's all squatting down hugging and kissing her and taking pictures and so he talks and talks to her and then after a while mama taps him on the shoulder and says okay baby you better go back to your door I don't want you to lose your <laughs> you job get in trouble <laughs> yeah. I ain't know nothing about no one and Usher said his bam <laughs> She could have bought that place. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what did you do with the? Oh, I right. just different people here at organization. Boys and girls club. Boys and girls club. Mountain. Different things I could I couldn't do nothing for my own self, but, but different other things I could help other things. Yes, so I helped a lot of lot of people. Yeah, I did. I bought a, a bench for my playground. Lord have mercy. And I put it down there and this year, Mr. What do you name? Strada. <laughs> Mayor Strada. Mr. Strada let somebody stole my whole big old the, bench. The bench? Yeah, how did that all happen? See, I went to these white folks meeting and they wouldn't let me come up in the meeting. Told me to sit back there. Mm -hmm. In the they back. Sent, so they sent a representative from the clip, asked me what did I want to do or what did I want. And I told them I want to. First thing I want suits. We didn't have in those suits. We had outdoor toys, and I, I, I made a cesspool. My children messed it up in, in a year's time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I turned down there. He said, "Okay, go to, go to door to door and see how many people want." So I went back and told them people. Them people say they weren't gonna sign nothing because they signed one thing one time and. They couldn't get no grocery, no nothing, and they oh. weren't going to sign. They say, okay, that's all right. We'll just leave us brought at each person. They went to work the next day and had us those. Then the next time I went to the playground, and some little girl got ran over in the street. And I said, oh, let wow. me go back. I knew I had to sit back on the back. So I told them what I want. They say, well, you have to go and find this brought for me. So I went to the finest spot. And the man said he wanted nine hundred dollars for it. I went back and told him they said, Okay. They went and they gave me the money to pay for the spot and they went right to work. And they bought all kind of equipment for the pay. I told his children here, yeah, I regret I didn't go back to those people and thank them over and over again. Cause, and they gave me money to hire somebody to take care of the children. Mm. Now that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I had the children right around there, the young men's and things right around there. I had them to take care of the children. In 2003, they named it in her honor. At first, it was just the park. 
but then they named it in her honor. They have a different wow. community park. Wow. What are the, the major values and principles that you live by? Oh, kindness, one of the purest traits. I find a place in human heart. I try to teach children being kind. I try to teach that to my children too. That's be, regardless to how people have hurt you, you got to forgive them and be kind to them. And to some people you know have really hurt you, but you got to look over. Everybody, if this, this world, all, you get the news, all these children killing each mm -hmm. other and doing all this stuff. It's terrible. If you would try to teach kindness at your home, try to let your children grow up, tell them how to be nice and kind to people. For somebody um, who would love to, to get to your age, Ms. Dillard, um, of 106, <laughs> what would you tell that person to keep fighting? And, and how, what, what would be that message that you would tell them to, to just keep All pushing? All I know to tell you, baby, first you can't, Think about being kind. Then you try to eat as decent as you can. <laughs> try to eat as decent. Sometimes you may not have what you want, but try to eat as decent. But the major thing is being kind to each other. Forgiving each other for whatever. Trust the Lord with your whole heart, mind, and soul. All right. the thing, the thing that you need to keep up with. You do those three things may help you live a long, long time. And for those, the people who are wanting to make a difference in their community, what would be that first push that you would give them? Well, the thing I do is you, you may start off like me, doing it yourself. Hey, doing it yourself. Then, then the, after a while, somebody else will help you. Then it'll grow on and on from that. But the first couple of years, I saved a hundred dollars and gave that child to go buy a little basket for somebody who we knew was needed. Tell me about um, you still being active in the community. What are what are the things that you're doing in helping um, people so they can continue to, to well, live I in try, this world? Well, I try. Just like this lady that lost her sister. Well, I sit here and. No, I told the children, they, don't, they back, back, I give it. And uh, she needed it. And uh, anytime, anytime something happens in your community and it needs you, you just go on down on your knees, do it. Yeah. You may not be able to do a whole lot, but do something for them. So I still got a good mind, a good heart I can it see. It's so good. <laughs> It's good <laughs> for you to remember a lot. That it's still Grand Avenue is now <laughs> named Miss Leola Dillard Way. Tell me how that all happened. That young man came here saying, you know much of you've done, but you mind me to go and trying to get this, this street name in your honor. I said, just help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that would happen though. So we went on down there and got with them somehow. They agreed right at once, I think. He didn't have no objection. And Ms. Dillard, before, before I end it, I want to give you that last opportunity. What, what, after all you've given us, which is amazing information, what would you want to leave with the community today? If they saw this video and they took away from everything, what would, what would you want them to, to take away from you as a person? I just want to leave with them just this one thought. Be nice and kind to people, regardless to how mean they are to you. Uh, leave one thought with everybody. If you would learn to be nice and kind to people, and uh, that would carry you a long time if you just can be nice. Love one another. That's one trick everybody should have in their mind. And you too, especially you. Love one another. Love yes, each other. Love each other. Love enough to give them something if you think they need something. Do something for them if you think you need it. Just love each other. I wish we could get that all over the world. It'd be a better world. Yes, ma'am, it definitely would. It'd be a better world. 
Now, you've had the opportunity to have the same feelings and emotions that I had when I first interviewed Elder Dillard. For someone who is 106 years young, still living, breathing, kicking, and for the most part, doing just about everything that you can imagine, she continues to amazes me. Although I've been saying it this entire time, Miss Leola Dillard's last wishes are to meet Mr. President Barack Obama, Miss Oprah Winfrey, and Mr. Usher Raymond. If we can make her dreams come true before moving to the next slide, I know not only will Miss Dillard appreciate it, but here on behalf of the Four Elements, we would truly appreciate it as well. To Miss Dillard and the family, I want to personally thank you all for giving me the opportunity to interview you, sharing your story, allowing you to encourage someone else as not only someone else, but myself. The love and experiences that you've given and showed allowed me to know that all it takes is love in this world for us to live better. Love one another, cherish one another, because you never know how long you're gonna get with someone. So I take love as well as cherish, but not only follow your dreams. You said it the most, the clock will tick and tick and tick. It's up to you to go and follow your dreams and to do something about your dreams. Cause if you won't, that clock is still gonna tick. But when you die, your dreams are gonna die too, unless you go and do something about your dream. I'm gonna be sharing this poem until the day I die. It is an amazing poem. It gets us to realize that we really do need to make a mark. And that mark is to realize what our dream is. From that mark, we gotta go and do something. Um, and so you, you've been a wonderful inspiration to me and I hope everyone who had the opportunity to hear that poem um, had taken a way that they need to start doing something. They, they can talk as much as they want to, they can talk as much as they need to, but unless they put actions to it, there ain't nothing that they can do more. So thank you again. You've been a, a, an incredible inspiration to me and to everyone else. Thank you guys for sticking around. Ms. Dillard's interview was wonderful. Um, we want to encourage you to come back for another interview. If you guys want to be a part of this legacy, want to be a part of the story, check us out on all of our social media outlets listed below, as well as if you're wanting to tell your story or be a next candidate on your ancestors, go to our website at www.the4element.com. Register today to be selected for your next interview. And again, thank you everyone for joining in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our videos for more content to come. Um, and again, y'all take care.